Good morning, friends. Today we're going to be doing our skills lesson, cycle 19, lesson 99. Our focus today, our learning target, is that I can sort words with R controlled OR sounds and R controlled R sounds. That means we're going to be listening for the sounds OR and the sound R. You'll hear those in words and you'll see that spelling pattern. Let's try sorting the words from the next list into the OR and R sounds. They might not always have these spellings, but they'll always make those sounds. Let's find out. Let's sort these out. They have been sorted into two categories for us. We have to decide what belongs under these boxes. Is it OR or R? So listen to these words. I'm going to start with this list. These words are large, snarl, starve, charm, harp, starch. Hmm. I hear a sound in those words. Do you? They all have the same sound somewhere in their middle. Hmm. Well, it's either going to be the R sound or the OR sound. Let's listen to our next list and see if we can tell which one is which. These words are scorch, forge, gorge, storm, stork, force. Did you hear the sound in those words? I heard R and large and R and snarl, R and starve. R in charm, R in harp, R in starch. So this must be the R words. Let's find out about these. I heard or in scorch, or in forge, or in George, or gorge. Sorry, or in storm, or in stork, or in force. So these must be the or words. I want you to try writing these down and label these as the R and highlight the A R R and those words. I want you to write down these words and label them. Or and highlight the O R or in each of those words. Take a moment to pause the video and write down those words and highlight the A R for the R sound and the O R for the OR sound. Good job. Now let's move forward. Our work time targets are that I can collaborate with my teacher or people around me to edit a sentence. I can say every consonant and vowel sound. I can identify parts of a sentence, including the first word, capital letters, and ending punctuation. And I can use what I know about common spelling patterns to spell words correctly. So let's Edit a sentence together. This sentence here, I read my cat likes to play with yarn. Hmm. Well, let's start by looking at the beginning of our sentence. Can you find the first word? Say the first word. That's right. The first word is my. 
When we see a first word in a sentence, what should be special about the first word? If you said the first word should start with a capital letter in a sentence, you would be right. Is this letter capital? No! Let's fix it. Now we have a capital M at the beginning of our sentence. My cat likes to play with yarn. I see a few more mistakes, do you? That's right. If we keep going through our sentence, I'm going to see some mistakes. And one that I saw as I was reading was this word here. Cat likes. Does that make sense? Cat likes. No, it doesn't make sense. That's not a real word. There are two words that are squished together here. They forgot to do something to make them two separate words. What did they forget to do? That's right. They didn't put a space. Let's add our space. Did I put the space in the right spot? Are you sure? Does it go here? about here? You're right. It was in the right spot. The first spot was the right spot. My cat likes to play with yarn. I see one more mistake. Do you? Remember, we were looking for the first word, capital letters, and ending punctuation. Well, we looked at our first word and we fixed its capital letter. What haven't we done yet? That's right, our ending punctuation. What should this be? Should it be an exclamation point? Like this? No. Because it's not a super exciting sentence. It's a normal sentence. What about a question mark? Does that work? No, because it's not a question. What should we put? If you said the period, you'd be correct. My cat likes to play with yarn. Very good. What did you do today that's helping you become a more proficient reader? Let's break down that sentence. What did you do today that is helping you become a proficient reader? Proficient means that you're getting quicker and better at reading. So what do you think could help you here? Was it that we could sort some more sounds? Read some new spelling patterns. Correct our sentences. See when words should be split apart so they make sense. What helped you? Take a moment to write about it or draw about it and send it to your picture or to your teacher. Send the picture to your teacher or your writing to your teacher or both. We have one more thing to do today. For our independent work, we're going to read the decodable text, Looking for Mars, and try to understand it. Then we're going to write a sentence using correct spelling, punctuation, and capitalization, and add it onto our story. Our story is called Looking for Mars. So you're going to add two to three sentences at the end of the story to add more onto the story. Then you're going to answer the questions, what do you think 
Pat and James see in the sky. So let's begin our story. I'm going to read through it the first time, and then I will display it one extra time for you to read on your own. If you would like to pause the video now to read, you can. I'm going to have some extra space so you can take time to process your words as well. Let's begin. Remember, look for what Pat and James see in the sky. Looking for Mars. It is dark. There is no storm. It is time to see Mars. Pat and James start to go to the park, but it is not warm, so they get a scarf for Pat. It is a short way to the park, but it is a long way to the stars. There are so many stars, says James. There is the North Star. It is hard for Pat to see. Mars is so far. Look for the red. Just look very hard, says James. It is still hard for Pat to see. She does not see Mars or the North Star. James and Pat go to the yard in the park. We can see more stars in the dark, says James. Then Pat grabs his arm. Mars, says Pat. I knew you could see it, says James. I go to bed with stars, asks Pat. No, that would be not be safe. But we will do it again, says James with a smile. I did it, Pat says. Bye, stars. Bye, Mars, says Pat. All right, friends. Remember, you have to answer the question, what did Pat and James see in the sky? I'm going to slowly scroll through, and you can look for your answer to help you write it down. You may pause the video at any point if you need more time to read. All right, friends, we read the book Looking for Mars. Your task is to answer the question, what did Pat and James see in the sky? And to write two or three sentences to add to the end of that story. 
Think about the sentences from the book. They were simple, but clear and help tell the story. Make sure yours do the same. Have a good time writing and reading, friends.